Hello, today I'm excited to show you a new styling technique that I've been playing with called Focus Selection History. So the JavaScript required is just a few lines here, uh, one function, and then we'll be interacting with it and watching how the DOM updates, and then we'll have an opportunity to add some styles to do a few different things. So let me walk you through this JavaScript first, and then we can begin playing. The first thing we need to do is look through our document and find all of the selectable elements. So I've listed these as all input, text area, select, button, and link elements that have a uh, reference. And then for each tag that we find matching this selector list, we're going to do the following things. We're going to add an event listener. So actually the entire rest of this is that event listener and its function, and it's going to be on the focus event. So when any of these elements in the document are focused, this particular function is going to run. This function looks through the document and selects all elements with a data focus history attribute. And for each of those tags that it finds, it's going to take the focus history data attribute and increment it by one. So this is the exact same as doing uh, plus one. Then the last thing that this function does is it returns uh, the e target. So the e target is going to be whichever one of these elements triggers this event, that's our e target. And for its focus history data attribute, we're going to set that to zero. So Let's check that out in the DOM and see what happens as we interact with it. Here I've got a bunch of inputs. I'm going to make this larger so we can see it. And as I focus on one, see how it gains this attribute, data focus history zero. And as I tab through, you can see that each one is getting incremented by one. And if I reverse the order here, you can see the zero climbing back up. So this seems to be working correctly. Let's get to styling. So the first thing that we can do if we want to style this is uh, target it based on this attribute. So I'm just going to write an attribute selector here and say I want the current selected one to be red. And so as we move around, you notice that that is always true. So I'm just going to do a little rainbow so you can see. So what do we have? Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, go, violet. So now we should have a rainbow. I wish the CSS colors were a little bit better. <laughs> so that's one idea on how you could use the focus selection history. Uh, rather than doing a rainbow, maybe you could have it uh, be one shade that is uh, going slowly more um, transparent. Or maybe you could... Uh, I don't know. If you had a big form, maybe this could help people see where they had recently been. Um, but let's take this in a different direction then. Another thing that we can do with this is we can uh, write a selector that says um, if it is not something that has ever been focused, let's give it a background. Um, let's just limit it to inputs. So here, none of these have the focus history because none of them have been focused. But the first time any of them are focused, we can see that it goes away. And so it doesn't matter what the number is here. What our selector is for styling here is anything that does not have this data focus history attribute. So that could possibly be used if you had a form and you wanted to show people where they had not yet been. Uh, that could be another way that you could style that. Now, one thing I really wish that CSS could do would be uh, some kind of a comparison, like uh, if I said this less than three, or um, if uh, data history was uh, 
greater or equal than five or something. Uh, but this is not something that CSS does. So we're actually gonna have to pull in some JavaScript to do that. But one of my ideas is what about styling the focus history based on ranges of numbers as well. So to do that, I'm gonna add a new script here. Um, just let me get set up here. So we're gonna pull in uh, JS and CSS and one compare attribute plugin. So I'm gonna say import JS and uh, from, I'm just gonna link right on a hosted version of it. And then we're gonna do attribute from JS and CSS compare attribute. So now we should be good to go. So for this attribute uh, plugin for JS and CSS, we need a selector, an attribute, a function, and then a style sheet. So our attribute, the thing that we are going to style is going to be the data focus history elements. And also <laughs> the attribute that we're gonna be comparing is gonna be this data focus history uh, we can make these individual lines if it makes it simpler. And now this rule, n, uh, what if we say n is less than 3? Uh, give us um, a lime background. And let's see if we did that right. It's giving some errors. Can't find variable n, of course. So now we see that it is working, and if I click here, it updates. So the plugin is working correctly, but the event listener isn't. So now, by default, JS and CSS is running on the window load, resize, input, and click events. Let's change this one to key up and see what happens. Uh, and if we go over to inspect element, we can see uh, here, there's going to be extra attributes applied here. But uh, as we have our 0, 1, 2, and 3, you can see which ones are getting the correct style. And as this moves along, it also moves in the DOM. So let's add a second rule here that targets ones that are three to six. So if, if we said uh, less than three, greater or equal to three, and n less than six. Uh, let's make that hot pink. So now we should have uh, three lime green ones followed by three pink ones as we tab around. So anyway, there's a couple ideas, a few ideas for how uh, adding the idea of a focus selection history to the elements, the selectable elements in your page um, could be used for styling and a few different ideas about whether you're styling previously selected ones, whether you're styling ones that have not yet been selected, or whether you are um, targeting them by a range of attributes rather than by a specific individual number. Um, that adds some flexibility to how you're styling forms and other interactive pages, and hopefully somebody will be able to put this to use for good. So hope you have a great day and hope you have fun playing around with this.